Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me, I Belgian Productions. So today we'll be playing the first of our very unique, very original A to Z campaign for Hearts of Iron 4. And the first name on that gigantic alphabetical list is Afghanistan. Iron Man mode is on, historical AI focuses are on, and this is unmodded. I might pick mods for future countries, but I wanted my first take in this series to be fairly normal. So let's see. Afghanistan actually starts with a relatively large army. Let's group you guys up for now. But in terms of industry, there's not much. There's pretty much nothing here. So there's really only one thing I could try to do off Afghanistan and keep it interesting. I'm going to try to recreate the Persian Empire. Before we start this video, though, this is not a guide on how to do it. I have no guarantee that this will even work because it's so hard. Afghanistan has nothing and it needs to take stuff from everyone. The only person I wouldn't technically have to fight is the Soviet Union and the Soviet Union sucks so they are not even a good ally. All right, I have plans though. We start off with a little political effort. So at least we have the base focus tree that's really powerful, even if not very interesting. So political effort and then we'll try to flip ideologies to something that can justify either fascist or communist. I'm thinking along the lines of fascism for the extra recruitable pop, but then again, communist would allow me to buddy up to the Soviets, Mongolians, and Tuvans and get a whole bunch of their guns while I do my initial stuff. We'll have to see. Let's just start with political effort in terms of research. Well, we need guns, but start with a little bit of engineering and a little bit of production, and then we'll go from there. Construction, I would like to build a military factory. However, that's going to take four years. There's quite literally no point to it right now. What I'm going to do instead is build a railway. You're thinking, but why build a railway? You only have the one supply hub. Yes, but, 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 I will be attacking Iran. And Iran has a supply hub over there. I'm gonna try and make sure my railway is ready to plug into it as soon as we start conquering. But at least we'll start building a little bit of a railway. The one factory we have, we are gonna give away for steel, so yeah steel. I can go with the Soviets or I can go with the Germans. Let's go with Sweden. Nice and neutral. Nice and neutral. Alright, so we have a couple of divisions which look like... Oh god, this is disgusting. The Afghan army has light tanks. Why? And militia. So these are both useless divisions, but we'll go with the smaller militia division to start with. They're cheaper. Yeah, let's just Let's just start with this and do a little bit of exercising. We do have a fairly good general, so that's a good start. And I did check before, and we have a very good high command here. We have an infantry genius, which already sets us apart from our neighbors in that we actually have the building blocks for a good, if not huge, army. All right, let's get going. So another little feature that I want to put into my videos moving forward is I will be renaming every single one of my divisions into channel members. So, how does that sound? A little bit of a contribution to the cause, and you boys can be part of the glorious conquest. So, but first, let's start renaming some of these divisions. So, eventually, every member will get to pick one of these names, and the bigger the country and the more members, the more names you'll see out there. So, a little something for you guys if you want to contribute to the channel. This is a, a small way of me to, you know, give back, and of course, this is just more pain inflicted upon me because I have to do all of this manually because I don't know how to mod these lists to make it automatic. Okay, so I need to make my first big choice here. Communism, fascism. Two isms, and I don't know which ism I want. If I go fascist, I think I can flip faster, justify faster, and have good relations with the Axis, which is good and bad. If I went communist, I can buddy up to the Soviets, use Soviet help to defeat the Axis, capture hopefully some territory in the region, and then, I don't know, a counter-attack or something? We're gonna go for it, and if we fail, we fail. Fascism it is. I'm gonna go grab collectivist ethos down into nationalism, I think. And then I am going to be switching over to get some factories. Let's go grab the better guns as well. Again, this is not a guide. I don't know enough about how to play this country to call this a guide of any sorts. What I do know is that I'll need a couple more divisions for what's to come. I will be fighting pretty much all of my weaker friends here. I want more divisions. So I'm going to prioritize deploying these extra divisions. And we're going to fight Iran and Iraq probably at the same time. I, these are the only countries I can take without help. With 
limited help, let's say. Any new factories get to go on new guns, but I'm not converting the factory already have. It is working at a high efficiency. I just need a lot of guns. I, I, they don't even need to be good. I just need a lot of them. We'll also need some army experience, so I'm going to hire the army morale expert since the early stages, at least, will be fighting a lot of areas with no or limited supply. This guy's going to be, well, if not good, at least decent. Plus, it gets the army experience ticking. We need army XP to change our template, so the earlier we get it, the better. Now, let's go grab industrial effort down into armament effort three by that time we probably should be ready to change sides put on our brown shirt i'm also going to free trade i think that's gonna allow me to get more stuff yeah might as well i don't really have a lot of advantages so <laughs> <laughs> we have to be creative here. Really creative. Oh, that reminds me. At some point, I'm going to need to research these trains so I can take that decision that gives me trains because I will eventually require logistics. I'm starting to regret this whole A to Z thing because I really don't want to play as Afghanistan. Turkey. Um, I can take that non-aggression pact. I can always break it later. So, yoink. Use the little bit of excess political power I've got to quickly hire the infantry genius. All right, that's our third factory. Uh, I'm gonna grab militarism for a little bit of recruitable pop. Uh, leave the others here for later. Discredit government, national referendum. Bada bing, bada boom, new Afghan empire. And what an empire it is. Impressive. I'm gonna go with superior firepower. We're gonna hold off a little bit until I can hire the guy. Yeah, the military theorist. to save political power and army XP where I can. We'll grab construction. Let's grab better guns. Actually, f screw construction. Let's get better guns first. War is closer than construction is. While I wait, let's just make sure our divisions are up to standard. At least they're all 18 width. Not my favorite, but but they should be better than whatever the AI is gonna throw at me. And they'll be mostly equipped. I'm also getting some guns produced, so it should be mostly equipped. Let's throw in some artillery. How would that stack up? Well, that will stack up nicely. Anyway, let's just get rid of the terrible infantry equipment since we have very high production efficiency on the good stuff. Army's ready. Let's queue up a couple more divisions so we can deploy them when everything's said and done. Our priority will be on reinforcement and garrisons for now. While I'm here, let's also get civilian trains. I will need trains. One thing that really annoys me is that all of the good stuff, like four <laughs> civs and two mills have been built in Herat. And we're going to be giving up Herat. <laughs> Like the moment we declare war, leaving us with Kabul, which has not quite that much stuff in it. Speaking of, all right, the army's ready. We're all in position. We're more or less equipped. The numbers are mostly for the new divisions I've got queued up. So let's just declare war and wait for the Iranian army to arrive and then we'll destroy them piecemeal. Shouldn't be too terrible. Encircle and destroy. That's what we'll do here. If we can trap one unit, we trap one unit. If we can trap seven of them, we're going to trap seven of them. We want to destroy as many divisions of the Iranian army as possible. And make pinning attacks wherever you can, just to make sure the enemy doesn't try to pull its units out of the positions you're trying to attack. And I think if we can get those two encircled and then these encircled, we have a number of divisions trapped. That would be great if we can finish that. All right. So it's a start. It's not huge, but it's a start. It's two divisions here, and this is going to be another two divisions. So, yeah. Just got to do this a few times until the army of Iran is gone. It's not huge. We are pretty much on par in terms of numbers. So like one or two of these stupid maneuvers and we should have their army destroyed. Now, we don't want to rush this too much because remember, we need to draw this out for about 200 days so we can actually also eat Iraq. For some reason, again, this timing is wildly off. I don't know why. Yeah, they're already down to at most nine divisions, so I do outnumber them significantly. It's just that I want to have their army completely destroyed, if possible. So after a couple of rounds of simply going around the enemy, there's not much of an enemy left. So that's two more divisions encircled here. That's another cavalry division about to be encircled down here. It has to be so frustrating being the Iranian commander-in-chief right now as your army just disappears <laughs> and Iran no longer has an army they've well lost all of their country I'm just gonna keep Tehran encircled so they don't capitulate I think yeah Tehran and maybe something with a lot of victory points just to be on the safe side I'm just going to leave a unit next to every victory point and then I can capitulate them at will later on and considering we'll be occupying quite a bit of land without cores for well 
most of the campaign, if we ever are even able to get new cores, we'll be hiring a Prince of Terror. This is going to help at least a little bit. All right, our justification for Iraq is done. We can declare nobody else is going to get involved. There we go. And let's also just finish off Iran as well. I don't need all these guys here. You guys head to the front. Actually, just delete all the front lines. Draw a new front. Oh my god, I hate this. And we'll pretty much do the same thing to Iran that we did to Iraq. Sorry, to Iraq. We did to Iran. Outmaneuver them wherever we can. I just need to take Tehran. So the railways are now once again connected. And then these supply hubs will start uh, getting some much needed supply flowing into my nation. And the front line will be rejuvenated. All right. Capitulation, select all. They, they don't have anything else to take. Now, if I had any sort of industry, I would puppet these guys, use their manpower, use their factories, use their resources, and then integrate them when the time came that I occupied everything I needed. That's not going to be happening for, well, ever. So let's just take everything. I Yeah. Well, at least the Iraqi army is being outplayed on every front, so this should really not take long at all. Oh, I need trains, because I don't have any trains. Let's just common dear a few. I only have to do this once and then let's just focus on getting some stability because we don't have any. Manpower is okay, but I'll need to fix that, which we fortunately can. God. This is not going to be a particularly enjoyable campaign, I think. And there we go. The members have defeated Iraq. At least some guns out of this. And again, we just have to take everything, confirm and exit. That leaves us with a pretty big new Afghan empire, but economy, not strong. I need to control Turkey. I need to control the French states of Syria. I need to control North Africa, the Dodecanese, and all British states in Egypt, the Middle East, and the Eastern Med. The only thing I I can think of is either I cheese out some ships, but I can't. I don't have any dockyards. I had one, but it's gone now. I could get naval effort, but even if I could get dockyards, I'm not going to get enough ships. There's no way that I'll ever get enough ships to do a D-Day uh, or, or a sea line. So even if I join the Axis early on, there's nothing I can do to take out the Allies. I would not be able to get control of all of this territory easily. I think the only chance I have is to fight the Soviets along with the Axis first and only join that war. Try to carve out a juicy, juicy puppet there and use that puppet to either smack down the Axis followed by smacking down the Allies, which can a very long run or use that puppet to smack down the allies because the allies if they play their cards right will control syria eventually vichy france usually gives up or loses or does something dumb the allies probably are going to end up controlling uh the italian north africa and that just might be the ticket i need to get something out of this deal it's a nice army of members we have i think we're just at 24 with the ones in this list so if you want to see your name in this uh, list in future remember click that uh join button you can be a channel member nice discord role place the chat and you get to be part of the glory right, the next thing i'm gonna do might be a little controversial but i want to build a supply hub in this general region either in tabriz itself or right on the border here but that one's pretty close to baku just so i actually have room to maneuver this is terrible terrain everything here is bad i just need to have some chance of moving the front one way or another i'm going to be building that fortunately i can still click this button which should help and this is going to be built by february which is a long time but at least it should work it should be in time all right germany does its thing i don't really care what germany does right now personally i am just going to be trying to vibe as much as i can Ooh, things have picked up i'm suddenly trading a whole lot of oil to germany which is very very good. That means I have factories. I'm building faster, but I'm going to quickly hop in here and get a spy agency. It doesn't really matter yet, but it might be very useful for dealing with the Soviets and any future attacks in the area. As usual, Germany is going ham in Europe. I think at this point, it doesn't really matter. I can just join the Axis if they'll let me. Yeah, I'm going to join the Axis and not join any wars with the Allies. None. None of these wars I'm going to join. I'm only going to fight the Soviets. 
minutes. I think I'll have to manually justify the... Oh, uh, yeah, non-aggression pack. I think I have to manually justify that war, though. Unless I'm cheeky and I... Uh, I can only guarantee fascist nations. Damn it! So, yeah, I'll have to manually fight uh, or declare or justify on the Soviets because I don't think I can join just the Soviet war. Every time I've tried that, I've joined all of the AI's wars and I am not fighting everybody. Meanwhile, Germany's pretty much done in Europe, Yugoslavia and Greece. And I think in about six months, summer of 41, they'll go for the Soviets. So I am strapped in and ready for this. I can justify, but it's still going to take like, a lot of time. But there is also good news. We've managed one collaboration government. We're going to build a spy network up again. And I think by the time summer hits, we should be ready. I got most of what I need out and I'm getting more units trained. So these 14 really need to get trained though. <laughs> I'm tempted to also start work on anti-air. Is it gonna do much though? Uh, we'll see. It might allow me to pierce some of the weaker Soviet tanks and I can't do anything with air anyway. I'm a little late to the party though. 130 days. So the member divisions, the good boys are, well, not the world's greatest template, but this should work. I would like to add two more artillery pieces to it, but I can't really afford to. I'm also gonna add support AA once I have a bit of a stockpile and then the rest of the army uh, as it is, is just these militia. Uh, all these boys have to do is stand on the front lines <laughs> with the Soviet Union and, and don't retreat. Just hold this line and they'll be fine. My main thrust is going to come up through the Caucasus. That's where the members come in. I need you guys to do this right for me, boys. I need you guys to come through for me here. All right, Germany has broken the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. Now, what I would like to do is click Join Wars and Join the Italian-Soviet War, whatever. However, you'll notice that it's a very long list of defenders. Doesn't matter which one of these I select, I join every war. I fight everyone everywhere all at once and I don't want that it's so annoying and as a result there's nothing else for me to do but manually justify it's gonna take a very very long time well 30 days it's not a very long time but it's a lot of time for the soviets to deploy troops to counter me it is what it is all right justification is done it's now or never i'm not gonna call any of my allies in they're already involved I'm gonna declare this war and pray pray that nothing goes wrong why can't i go to total mobilization because i don't have the war support why don't i uh, all right go and total mobilization all right i'll get the fresh manpower as soon as we get more political power and then i can get women in the workforce i think yeah i should qualify all right first order of business is probably probably going to try and encircle as many divisions here as i possibly can i will be playing this very very slowly though <laughs> i really really need to take my time in planning and executing this whole thing. So at least we'll be taking Baku. Also means I need to plug that railway into Baku as early as possible. Supply is going to be my main enemy. How have they pushed me straight out of Baku? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. How? How are they just... <laughs> What? All right, so we've probably turned that big defeat near Baku into a big win for us here. That's good. Let's just keep going. Front's gonna get hella long, though. Attack and counterattack. That's all there is to it. Attack and counterattack. And eventually we'll wear the Soviets down enough. Should be able to reach Batumi as well. If I do, I'll have this whole thing, well, not locked down, but I'm in a good position to get it locked down soon. And that should be Batumi secure. Go on then. Take it. All right, that should be Batumi secured. Fortunately, there's a bunch of Germans here to help me shore up my lines. That definitely helps. And now you can see the entire Soviet army in this region. Well, most of the Soviet army in this region is now out of supply. Next stage of the operation is to actually take Tbilisi so I can you know, make use of it. And then we push up towards Grozny, the river line, and eventually out into the plains here of Volodonsk. Oh, th this, this area here. German advance, meanwhile, not really going well. So encouraging and heartwarming to see that the Soviets are prioritizing my front line with all of their ridiculously powerful medium tanks. You know, I uh, love the vote of confidence you're giving it. Y y you got on me here, Soviets. Just that I wish you didn't have to. I, I wish 
I wish there was a different way. Yeah, those Soviet tank divisions are gonna be the death of me. I can't pierce them. I can't do anything to them. Yes, yes, I get it. Historical. You should have built AA, blah, 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 blah. I get one factory at the start of the game. So what do you expect me to do with it? Well, it's been a short period, but we've lost 60,000 men. I have, however, destroyed 145,000. So positive. Good contribution. All right. Maybe we might actually just still have a shot at this. I just need Germany to do better than they are currently doing because in about another year, maybe two, allies are going to ruin everything. Meanwhile, Italy still hasn't finished off Greece. They never do. Ever since they changed this area or last patch, I think Bible at Loan, I've never seen the AI axis been able to kill Greece. I don't like that. I would like that to be addressed because it's very detrimental to balance. Italy bleeds all of its equipment here and becomes useless. And Germany, well, Germany just needs an overall buff of sorts. Yay, another encirclement. I'm having more success with the pointless border guards than I have with the actual good divisions. Still though, ah, go, 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 go. Fuck it, fuck. Oh, seriously. Just move, move. No, the way this is going, we're not winning this. <laughs> Make a breakthrough. Soviets instantly pull two medium tank divisions out of their ass. It's just, I've lost hope. Doesn't matter for all my complaining. I'm actually still getting things done. It might still happen if I'm quick enough. At least I got most of the local supplies secured. I can retake Grozny. That would be great. It's not much, but for a country the size of Afghanistan, this is this is huge. And it looks like it might herald the end for the Soviet front here. Looking at these yellow bars, they are very low on equipment. And I might be able to make some more happen here. Hurrah, hurrah. That was the opening we needed, I think. Our gateway to a couple of easy wins definitely use a couple of easy wins right now. It's been a very tough six months. Equipment wise, we're holding, but not really holding. <laughs> the losses are limited, but I'm not really getting any lend lease because the axes have just been bled dry. Allies are actually still like a massive thorn in our side. Well, German side. So I think we might have to shelve the idea of forming Persia. That is most likely not happening this playthrough, but I will try to give you guys a good run of Afghanistan. That and encirclements. I can always give you guys encirclements. Look at that. Look at that beauty. Mm. Get the Astrakhan. I'll have most of the supply hubs in this region connected and taken, except, well, just except for Stalingrad and Krasnodar. Getting to Krasnodar is going to be difficult, but it's not going to be impossible. If we get some access troops on this front to hold, we can still make it happen. And that would be another small-ish pocket if the units will actually just move in. Please, please get there before... No. How? I think the only way I can I can advance this front is if Germany or Italy or any one of my allies put some troops here so I can concentrate my 24 divisions on a narrow front and push through towards Krasnodar through these plains here. Because supply is going to be a nightmare if I don't take Krasnodar and Novorossiysk. And then maybe we can get to Rostov and Stalingrad as well. But again, having to rely on the AI is not great. I've killed a bunch of these individual divisions already. Not a whole lot of Soviet troops here. Um, they're down at least 50 divisions since I last complained about that. Um, losses are also up. What I want to do is concentrate all 24 of my divisions and just drive for Krasnodar. Okay, I'm, I'm way overextended here. This isn't working mostly because I'm not getting the help I need. I'm not pushing into Stalingrad. There, there's no supply. If I can hold on to Astrakhan and the rest of the railway network, I can pull my units back a little, try and concentrate them and see if I can maybe push towards Krasnodar or Ross. Stuff. The Germans are losing everywhere, which means I'm gonna need to stop my offensive. It's also incredibly costly in terms of equipment, and it's not really getting me what I need. Lines moving forward, but at such a slow pace that it might as well not be. Might as well grab trucks. Maybe I can make a couple of trucks with my virtually not. Oh, 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 oh. If I'm quick on the ball here, I can take Krasnodar. If I can take Krasnodar, I have a supply hub. I just need to build a railway to link it up. So how about I start work on a railway? Make that my top, top, 
top priority. I can take Krasnodar. I have supply in the region. I can hurt the Soviets. I'm feeling a little stressed out, guys. I'm also out of manpower, so I'll stop the units that I had queued up. Okay, I have Novorossiysk. I have Krasnodar. Oh, that's good. That's good, because the port of Novor Ro Novorossiysk plugs into Krasnodar. I technically don't have to build that railway, but I will, because it's the safe bet. And now, if I can push up towards Rostov. Yes, 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 yes. We can still do this. We can still do this. Meanwhile, these Soviet troops are going to starve because I've taken their supply. Excellent. And then push towards Kerch and just take the tile here so they can't just keep sending troops across. Yes. Oh, this is so risky, but it's going to be worth it. Make it across. Go, 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 go. And all right, we have this position now. I'm going to try and hold it with a all right, fallback line here. Two position, uh, two units here to hold the crossing. Everybody else just focus on taking out the Soviet Union's armies in the region. I, I have to push up now towards Rostov. If I can push towards Rostov, I can then swing into Stalingrad from the other side and maybe make a big old Kessel here because all of these Soviet divisions have no supply, while the German and Afghan divisions do have supply. We have all the supply now. If you don't appreciate these small pockets, do you even deserve to get the bigger ones? All right, so that gamble actually paid off and it didn't really cost us anything other than a ton of equipment. Fortunately, Lend-Lease is ridiculously overpowered. Okay, so that was a very good initial push. What if I deploy here and try to cut there? See if we can get that bit encircled here. Again, supply, bit of an issue. I'd like to take Rostov. Don't know if I can because, you know what? No, 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 no. I can. I can take Rostov. I will take Rostov. And if it kills me, please don't let it kill me. I just need to make sure I guard the entrance to Kerch. One division to do. It's a river. It's nice. It's a straight crossing, so even that tank's probably not going to push through if I get entrenchment. All right, apparently we managed to push through to Rostov. Great, that means we have supply in the region. I'm thinking push up along the river to Stalingrad. I create a big old castle here to the south. Make that pocket. Make that pocket happen. And pocket. I think there's enough Germans in the region to justify me doing this. To first prioritize and cleaning that up. Oh, look at that. They're dying. So where were you when Afghanistan took Stalingrad? <laughs> Historical game, by the way. And in a shocking turn of events, the new <laughs> Afghan empire is um, expanding rapidly. Dangerous as this might be, but I am forced to let the AI garrison a lot of the front because I j just don't have the troops. And that results in stupid things like this, where they just forget to occupy a tile. As long as they hold on to Stalingrad, Astrakhan, and most of the railway network, I'll be fine. All right, we're about to take Dnipropetrovsk, and that puts us one tile away from the German lines. And I think with that, we've linked our fronts. Go on, walk into the tile. Walk into the tile. All right, with that, we've linked up our front lines. I'm now we're gonna focus my efforts on pushing to Sevastopol. That is great. Oh, one big old front line. Soviets are entirely on the back foot now. That's another bunch of Soviets encircled and about to be destroyed. How are we looking here? We've killed 1.1 million. And we're about to hold ourselves a little Yalta conference here. Right, boys? More lambs to the slaughter for the Afghan army. Good, they'll die. Let's just look at these units disappear. At least that will, ah, that feels nice. All right, so I've decided to take my militia. I've updated the template a little bit, added support artillery and engineers. They're still not great, but they'll do. I've concentrated them into a push on Tash Kent and Kokand. At least that will get me a couple more victory points. I'm pushing through the Ural Mountains to the north. Everything's bad. Everything's terrible. But the front line is moving at least and the Soviets are close to death. Another gorgeous pocket here. At this point, I think we're pretty much toying with the Soviets. The army... There's <laughs> There's no Soviet industry left. I have almost more factories than the Soviet Union does at this point. We've inflicted 1.4 million casualties out of the 6.5 million they've taken. Germany's bounced back pretty significantly, but yeah, we had a pretty rough start. Luckily, the Allies haven't made any major naval landings. And the Soviet Union dies. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I think we've gotten all the things we could have realistically gotten. So we've got a, a very big Reichskommissariat Russia. That's our, our puppet. We've also puppeted the Empire of Fire and Greater Armenia, as well as the Neo-Seljuk Empire, the Uzbek Khanat, 
the best foe of Macha and Neo Kirgis Kana. So, bunch of puppets. Hopefully, they all do their little focus trees. Give me many, many factories. I've also got a lot of war apparitions. That's the one. I did, however, lose, like, almost all of my factories because I was occupying most of these factories, didn't actually own them, which is unfortunate. Got a nice juicy fleet out of the deal, though. So, we've got a navy, at least. We might even be able to use it at some point. So, I think I'll be leaving the axis now if if I lose the game because of this well at least we have this beautiful thing to look at right so at least we have that going for us all right so let's leave the faction bye bye maybe we can suck up to Japan maybe Japan will be willing to help us out fortunately I think most of the railway network is in a good state right now it could be better but it's pretty all right I've got a lot of factories churning out making more factories making more railways it's gonna be now or never I'm not gonna join the axis though no joining the axis at this point I could do a meme and flip to a different ideology, but I think that's uh, also pointless. All right, the world being in the state that it's in currently, I'm pretty much forced to act. I'm going to strike against the allies, and I think the easiest and best way for me to strike against the allies is to just join Japan's faction and do things that way. I won't have to justify. I can catch the AI with their pants down. Should be good. So I've got a member's army, fully decked out boys, guarding the border with the Dominion of India. If I'm quick about it, I can even seize this supply hub on the border deprive the enemy of the advantage. I've got my original army on the borders with the uh, allied holdings in the Middle East, and I have some divisions guarding my ports. They will be not great, but they should be able to hold. That leaves me with the navy that is currently on strike force in the Persian Gulf. Hopefully, those things combined can slow the tide. The Japanese-Chinese war? Or the Italian war on Ethiopia? What? You know what? I don't want to fight China. I'll just click this button. And I'm at war with the world. This is going to suck. Well, so far, so good. Um, I've pushed into India far enough to take this supply hub. That's going to connect to our capital soon enough. That will make supply much easier, and I should be able to hold that border no problem. Yeah, the AI is not pushing through here either. Kuwait's taken, ports are guarded, fleet still controls the area, and I have effectively cut the French forces in Syria off from, well, Syria. And I think I'll control, yeah, I control Syria as well. Well, most of it. And now I just need to start pushing down towards Egypt. All right, through determination and grit, we've at least taken most of the French states in Syria. If I can take Lebanon, at least. And again, I'm constantly building and upgrading railways as I go because an army marches on its stomach, as they say. Huh. Um, there's a Soviet Union? Can someone point on the map where I can find this legendary... Oh, no. <laughs> Stalin is stuck on the Chukchi Peninsula and has just declared war on Reichskommissariat Ostland. No way. Okay, uh, that's that's just that's funny. Realistically, all I want to do is push up to like Tobruk, set up a defensive line there, push down here, maybe set up a defensive line there, and then build an army that I can use to take Turkey. I need to take Turkey. They are, however, guaranteed by Germany, so that's going to be interesting. I think the biggest issue we're going to face this campaign is just taking Turkey. Because once I've dealt with North Africa and, and dug in, I don't think the AI is going to be capable of dislodging me if I manage my troops well and pick good positions. However, I need to fight Turkey, who is guaranteed my axes and allies, and is pretty big in their own right. I think I can only attack Turkey once the axes have died, because Turkey is relatively isolated from the allies. If I'm quick enough on the ball, I can do this, but if they join the axis and the axis troops get involved, they can just pour divisions through there like crazy. That's a lot of Americans um, dying for no good reason. Railways up, supply is good. Holding El Alamein, I can push out from there when the time comes. I am going to be switching over the members for now into Russian. In no, no, not, not the members, not the members. My second member army, which has a couple of members. I see you guys here. Actually, I can create a couple more members. I'm thinking switch these guys. They're not actively engaged in combat. Switch these guys over 
to the Russian template, as well as all these militia I currently have parked somewhere. So if I switch you guys over to be cheaper in the manpower, but more expensive for everything, I got plenty of army experience. I'm going to create Russian garrisons. That frees up a lot of manpower. And as we go, I'll switch more and more divisions over to the Russian templates as well. Manpower will eventually run out, unfortunately. Oh, no, 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 no. I think Turkey's in. Oh, they're in with Japan. What? But not us. Okay, so this one's going on the Reddit. <laughs> oh my god. And Free France has called Turkey in as expected. I'm gonna do here. I don't know what I'm gonna do here. Construction engineering, Japan. Yeah, I'm not gonna fight China for you. So what I've done is deployed more of these Russian conscripts. They're not equipped. They're not really ready for anything, but I've stacked them on the Egyptian border in the north and south. Hopefully they can hold this front. I've left a couple of my divisions in place just because I know I might need them. The rest of the Turkish front is now well and truly stacked with my units to try and head off the, well, the worst of it, I suppose. Fortunately, the allies are also not really doing great. They're bleeding themselves dry in Greece. And now with Turkey under attack from two sides, I think think I can get into a good position. Once I've dealt with that, I can slowly build up towards a war with the Axis for the last slice of land I'd need, and then, then we'll see. But first, must defeat Turkey. Okay, so it turns out Turkey is shockingly easy to invade. Okay, so big play is to cut off part of the Turkish army and circle and destroy that, so I only have one front to push through. Rest is sort of holding, but I've peeled all of my coastal guards down to the absolute bare minimum. Every good or decent division is being sent to the front, mostly southern Egypt, because I need to hold that. It is absolutely vital that we don't get pushed back there. It's very defensive. Pretty sure the Turkish army is non-existent at this point. It's like they're not really doing anything, like at all. I think now I can just roll Turkey, or what's left of Turkey, with a, a general offensive. I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm gonna babysit it a little bit. I'm mostly worried about the other fronts. Oh, there goes Turkey. I think I got most of what I wanted. Uh, just go and grab the Dodecanese Islands here, because I, I definitely want to take those from Greece and just a little bit of mopping up in the area here. Okay, our naval invasion can proceed. Uh, the Japanese fleet is in position in the Eastern Med. Very, very beneficial to me because my fleet is still stuck here in the Horn. Great, I'm gonna make use of that. I just hope the UK hasn't stacked everything on Cyprus. So the members undertaking this assault, you are brave, brave souls. And I don't think I'm going to get you guys killed because nobody's on Cyprus. All right, then. And now the members start their assault on the final provinces we need to take from the allies. And then I need to figure out a way to take this from Italy and Bulgaria. <laughs> That's going to be a difficult one, unless I can straight up attack them. In that case, it'll be incredibly easy. All right, so that push went easier than expected. Just gonna build more of this railway so supply is not going to be as terrible and now i need to check what else do we need so we only need the remaining turkish states that means i have to fight italy and Bulgaria. All right, at this point, we're going to decide if we can even finish the campaign. I've justified on Bulgaria. I've put up defensive lines pretty much everywhere that I need to. I have my members here, the elite on the border with the Axis powers. And of course, at this massive, massive pocket that we'll have to crush, then we'll throw all of those elite units at the Axis. Other fronts are all guarded. Uh, there's really nothing else we can do. If we cannot declare war on Bulgaria, we cannot continue because I will not be able to fight the Axis due to that non-aggression pact Japan has. The Axis have not been invaded. I don't think they will be invaded. And Japan has still made it hard in China. The US hasn't really invaded them. And I think the US fleet has taken quite a beating as well. Japan is still not dead. I can declare war on Bulgaria. I am now going to go to war with the Axis. This is going to be lovely, though. <laughs> Making that disappear. That is a whole lot of Axis divisions we've just made disappear. This is going to be the hardest part, pushing across into Istanbul. Don't really have a navy to back me up, but we'll see if I can if I can get them into position. This does seem like I might actually just be able to pull it off. I'm going to divert all the air I have, which isn't a lot. I'm going to divert all of those units and make this work. We have to make this work. This is the big play here. Oh, that is a lot of division showing up here. We will have to push through about... 
<laughs> well over a hundred divisions here. Just need to keep pushing. Just need to keep pushing. If I can get across here, I'll have one. But you know what? I'll hold. I'll hold. Oh, I'm running into another bug. For some reason, I'm not able to create this template. So these are just my marines. I've designed the template, but I'm not actually able to use it. That makes any sense. It just doesn't work. I don't know why. That said, I'll just start deploying a couple more units to all of the different ports I'll now need to be guarding. So yeah, a little annoyed by this. I, I really want to use these marines to get across the horrible, horrible straight crossing. And if I can't get into Europe, I, I cannot continue this campaign. It's, it's vital that I get my boys into Europe. Okay, so we've been in a stalemate for what, a year now? I'm not able to get across. I'm not able to get naval superiority. I've whittled down the enemy fleet split bit, but it's cost me. Overall, Frontline really hasn't moved. Um, I've been focusing on trying to build more airplanes, but it's not proving to be enough. What I've done instead is I noticed that there are no enemy ships in the Black Sea, so I have total superiority here, well, except for Romania stuff, but I have then decided to just build an aircraft carrier here and start dumping destroyers in the region as well. Since I can get my fleet in, I have to build all of the new stuff through the region. Using that, I should be able to get naval superiority superiority here. Then I'm going to take my seven new marines, that includes you, Colin, and we are going to hit this side here, Burgas and the tile below Burgas. Combine that with a pinning attack by the members across the Bosporus Strait and hopefully, hopefully we can encircle these divisions in Istanbul, crush them and push, push, push just to secure Edirn. And then I'm going to call it glorious Afghan aircraft carrier. It's amazing. Okay, so Burgas is guarded, but the tile above it isn't. All right, I can do this. I can do this, I think. I will need to take Burgas though, all right? That will allow me to cut them off. Two prone attack. Gonna need to be spicy. Force attack. We need to take the port. I would very much like to take the port. And of course, if we can take Istanbul, that would be even better. Just cut them off. Take the ports and cut them off. Come on, take Burgas. Take Burgas so I can funnel in more troops. All right, we've taken Burgas. The entire second army is going to be shipped across as well. And keep moving. This may not look like much, but these guys are going to start dying. And and there's a full army en route to reinforce my elite units. Okay, we're gonna take Istanbul this way. I, I feel it in my bones. We're gonna do it. We're going to take Istanbul. Oh, I already control Edirn. All I need is Istanbul and I can click the button. Go on. Go on, son. Take it. Take it. Oh, we've killed so many Germans there. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Yes, we've taken Istanbul. Oh, this is glorious. This is so good. Okay, 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 okay. Is that it? Is that all I needed? Yes, we can restore the Persian Empire. Okay, guys, we've been fighting for 10 years. More than 10 years. It's December of 46, but we can do it. We can recreate the Persian Empire. Yes, we're yellow now. That feels so Good. Oh, God, yes. So, uh, we're gonna let that tick. And suddenly we have 6.8 million manpower. We have 63 civilian factories. Not that many, but it's decent. And mills, 85 available to us. That is definitely not bad. Of course, we are at war with the Allies. We are at war with the Axis. And it's, it's extremely <laughs> unlikely that we'll win the whole campaign. But were I to want to continue playing, I think we can still destroy the, the Axis at least because I've killed 1.3 million Germans and I haven't really been fighting them head on. And I've really not lost that many troops. So I've killed a million Italians, 1.3 million Germans and a whole assortment of others. So Persian Empire's really done its job here. I actually had a lot of fun with this despite the brain rot. So I want to thank you guys for tagging along with me here through the this very weird and wacky campaign. And I want to thank the members. You boys did this, especially you, Cullen. You took a load of strength damage, but it was your division that took Burgas. Thank you for that. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you'll enjoy this next one too. See ya.